so I don't know if you noticed, but um, this week, uh, the Harvard Crimson, the Harvard Crimson is the student newspaper, the undergraduate newspaper at Harvard. Uh, very, very difficult to become an editor at uh, this newspaper. These are the top students at the top university in the country. This is, uh, this is you know, an amazing place. Uh, it's always been a bastion of debate, discussion. Um, and this week, the, the, the Harvard Crimson has come out in favor of the BDS movement. Now, what is the BDS movement? Uh, Josh says, the Bucks Celtic series is really exciting. Let's go Bucks. God, no. I'll give you back your 20 bucks. God, Bucks can't win that game. Um, what is the BDS movement? The BDS movement is a movement to basically uh, boycott uh, all goods from Israel to have nothing to do with Israel because Israel is a racist, apartheid, disgusting, offensive, horrible country um, that is committing genocide against the Palestinians and therefore worse than Russia, um, uh, worse than China, uh, worse, certainly worse than Saudi Arabia, where you remember they stone women and, and they, and they uh, jail atheists, um, uh, worse than... I don't know, Iran, uh, worse than any country on planet Earth because there is no other student-led movement to boycott any country in the world other than um, Israel. So Israel must be the worst country in the world. They must be the worst violator of individual rights in the world, and it's a horrible, horrible uh, place. Um, so uh, the BDS movement uh, has been around for years, the leaders of the BDS movement recently have basically said that they don't believe Israel should exist. There should be a Palestine there. There should be an Arab state there, but there should be no Jewish state. There should be no Israel. Um, so it, it really is a movement for the eradication, elimination of uh, Israel. Uh, the BDS movement would much rather support Syria, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Palestine, or Turkey. Thank you, anonymous user for making the list, right? Those countries would be better than having a Israel that is democratic, relatively free state. Oh, God, we've got a Marxist-Leninist on the chat. How fun is that? <laughs> Go for it, guys. Give him hell. Um, here's a country, Israel, that has elections. Uh, it actually has a, a Islamist political party right now as part of the governing coalition. Uh, here's a country in which its Arab citizens have, uh, you know, almost uh, complete equal rights to, to Jewish populations. Now, I wish Israel were better, but it's about as good as any Western country is. Um, here's a country that, um, here's a country that, that has, you know, basic property rights protection, basic contract law protection, that's basically a free country and a civilized country, a country with the rule of law, the country with the Supreme Court, the country where you can appeal your case, a country that has a, a rule of law. Yes. It is a country that occupies territory in which people don't have a vote. Why? Well, because those people are trying to kill Israelis, have been trying to kill Israelis for decades and decades and decades, really going back over 100 years. The Palestinians have rejected every peace deal proposed to them because they don't want peace. What they want, or at least the leadership wants, is the destruction of the state of Israel. It's what they've always wanted. It's the only thing they want. The leadership of the Palestinians is authoritarian, anti-gay, for example. Gays are regularly killed, in, murdered in the Palestinian Authority with no consequences. Uh, the Palestinians are ruled today by Hamas, a, an Islamist regime that kills heretics, 
that is quite open to stoning women, chopping off the hands of thieves. Oh, that's the Saudis. Oh, but same thing. But of course, leftists and capitalists are tolerant of that. Saudi Arabia is fine. Hamas is fine. Hezbollah is fine. Co force women to cover up completely. That's fine. No problem. But defend yourself. Have the courage to actually defend yourself. Have the courage to stand up for your values. Have the courage to stand up for Western values. Have democracy. Have rule of law. Have property rights. That is the definition of evil. And that must be suppressed. So we must boycott that. BDS is the ugliest form of anti-civilization, anti-West, and I would even say anti-Jewish advocacy today in the United States and the world. Lucas says, don't forget to notice that the Arab Israelis are in the chamber. Yeah, as I said, they're part of the Knesset, the parliament, they're part of the government today, in a sense that they don't sit on the government because they're, they're, they're Islamists, but they are part of the governing coalition. They are judges. They're in every profession. Now, again, I'm not saying there's no discrimination in Israel any more than I'm saying there's no discrimination in America. There is. And it's sad when there is. And sometimes the law, a bad law, Israel is way too nationalist for my liking. Israel is way too Jewish for my liking. But it's not that much different than any Western country. And its virtues far, far, far exceed its vices. It is a bastion of civilization in a barbaric area. Again, in an area that treats its women like they did in the Dark Ages, treats the rule of law like it did, like anybody did in the Dark Ages, no rule of law. Authoritarian, brutal, religionist. Israel is relatively secular and relatively capitalist so why did the crimson support pds you know for because of the horrors that israel commits and in particular they mentioned uh the fact that there was an exhibit on campus that brought them to jesus in a sense there was the moment that really clicked for them they, they suddenly realized how evil was because of this exhibit so uh, so what was in this exhibit and here again courtesy of I'm going to share these with you this is courtesy of um, Barry Weiss but photos Barry Weiss's website but photos from the exhibit so notice the exhibit the exhibit does not present facts um, what facts could be presented the facts are all in Israel's side but as the woman who wrote the article on Barry Weiss's site says, it used to be that these placards would list all the crimes Israel's committed. There are no crimes here. There's no list. They're just images. So on the left, all you have is a placard. And this is this moved the Harvard students to change their minds about BDS and become anti-Israeli. These placards did. The left one says Zionism is racism. Settlers, colonialism, white supremacy, apartheid. White supremacy. Are all Jews in Israel white? Is my wife white? What is white? Who's the supremacist here? God. The, are the Yemenite Jews white? Are the Ethiopian Jews white? I mean, these people are ignorant, stupid, and clueless. So yes, there's a list of supposed crimes. Apartheid. So I, 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 I visited South Africa when there was apartheid. It, it was like, it was, it was worse than Jim Crow South. Beaches for whites only, beaches for blacks only. Bathrooms for whites, bathrooms for blacks. No mixing of the races 
in terms of um, living. None of that exists in Israel. There are no Jewish beaches and Arab beaches. It's not even clear that the races are different, so racism is, is hard to apply here. Are they the same race or different races? Aren't they all Semites? There were no fountains for Arabs and fountain for Jews. There's no separation. Now, yes, most of the Arabs live in Arab villages and Jews live in Jewish villages, but there are Arabs who live in Tel Aviv. I lived in a, I lived in a city, Haifa, which was always mixed. I think I've told you half the engineering students in my class were Arabs. And most of them girls, surprising. Most of them Christian Arabs, but Arabs. Really? Apartheid? Do you know what the term means? Do you have any concept what it looked like? And you could say this is ignorance, but it's not ignorance. This is propaganda. Or take the image in the middle there. I assume you can all see the images. Right? You can see the images? Uh, yeah, you can see the image. Take the image in the middle there. I don't know how well you can see it, but it is an image of, um, uh, let me just see. It's an image of a faceless police officer bearing a, a truncheon over the bodies of dark-skinned people behind bars with bullet holes in their chests. I think the bullet holes look like uh, a Jewish star, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, stop, David. Couldn't get quite close enough to see. Their blood is dripping onto overturned American flag. Now, what does this mean? What does this have to do with Israel? I mean, it looks like exact copy of an image that's been circulating around as a meme by a variety of different Iranian-backed groups. So you mean the American left is circulating Iranian propaganda? That couldn't be, but they are. And if you think about it, what is this suggested? Is American police brutality that is suggested by this image, is it Israel's fault? Or maybe it's the fault of the Jews because Israel doesn't have a lot of impact on American domestic, domestic policy, but I, you know, every conspiracy theory claims that the Jews do. Or take the other two panels. Two panels, one in this image. Let me show you the other image. I have to play around here with the different windows that I have. Uh, no, not that. Not that. Uh, sorry, we'll get that. Here's the other image for what it's worth. Um, well, here in, in the other one, there were two images of doctors with pill bottles. And some reference to health and the denial of health being the worst crime possible. Does Israel deny health to the Palestinians, as far as I can tell? No. I mean, Palestinians that are need urgent care that cannot be provided in Palestinian hospitals are often taken into Israeli hospitals. Even patients from the Gaza Strip, the worst of the worst among the Palestinians, are taken into Israeli hospitals when they need serious care. So what are they referring to? Well, this is a dig on a often debunked myth, lie, that Israel withheld COVID drugs, COVID vaccines from Palestinians and that Israelis harvest Palestinian organs. Now, this harvesting of Palestinian organs is an old traditional Christian myth you know, spread by anti-Semitic Christians through the Dark Ages and into the 20th century about Jews killing children, eating children, drinking their blood, harvesting organs. This is displayed at Harvard, this kind of anti-Semitic horror. Then there's a panel. You can see it. Oh, it's in the previous one. You can see it there. Um, no, it's not in this one. It's in this one. Yeah, the, the second one from the left. It, it looks like gray clad prisoners with a Palestinian flag behind an Auschwitz-style barbed wire fencing 
along with a box cut train headed for a bricked up destination marked with an Israeli flag, suggesting concentration camps and the annihilation of the population. Using explicit Holocaust imagery to portray Israel as a committer of Holocaust. I mean, does it get any more anti-Semitic than this? Does it get it any more anti-intellectual than this? But this is today's left. It's not about ideas. It's about emotion. It's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's about who's suffering or is perceived to be suffering. Note that the Harvard Crimson decided to publish this this week um, after the last two, three weeks of a series of terrorist attacks in Israel where 15 civilians have been slaughtered, killed, knife attacks, an axe, guns, just horror and yet Israel is the villain not the Palestinians committing these horrific acts Israel is the villain so much of a villain that it's compared to apartheid and to the Nazis compared to the Nazis indeed just this week the foreign minister of Russia the foreign minister of Russia said that the worst anti-Semites in the world are Jews, and after all, didn't Hitler have some Jewish blood, implying in a statement that the Jews were somehow responsible for their own genocide, for their own Holocaust. This is the foreign minister. Supposedly, in a private conversation, Putin has apologized for that. But today, I guess you can be anti-Semitic, Nobody bats an eyelid. Nobody cares. Certainly the left doesn't care. The left has adopted anti-Semitism as one of its calling cards. And, you know, murder in Israel is considered nothing trivial. It's considered an act of justice on the part of the Palestinians, even when it's particularly brutal. Axe murders, knife murders of just people sitting at coffee shops, sitting at a bar, just walking, filling up gas in Beersheba a few weeks ago, filling up gas and getting attacked by a knife. The world doesn't care. On the contrary, it's just another opportunity to criticize Israel, its policies, its civilized nature. Yes, it, 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 no, uh, the, the apology, Luca, was private. So Luca says it was not a private conversation. It was an interview on Italian television. The Russian foreign minister, what he said was public. It was on Italian television. It was an interview. Putin's apology, supposed apology, happened in private. So Putin has not made a public apology. His apology was supposed to be in a phone call with the prime minister of Israel, who, you know, if you believe that it actually happened. Now, this going anti-Semitism on the part of the left in the U.S. is is everywhere. At Rutgers University. Rutgers University, another one of these great universities, right? Last month, on Yom HaShoah, Yom HaShoah is the day we, uh, Jews commemorate the Holocaust. It's on the Holocaust Rem- Remembers Day. Um, the Jewish fraternity, AEPI, uh, engaged in an annual ritual reading of names of the Holocaust uh, victims. And they get eggs thrown at the house. Now, it's become a tradition now to throw eggs at the Jewish fraternity house on Holocaust Remembers Day at Rutgers University. Who, who are these people? Who are these anti-Semites? At Rutgers, last week, uh, people leaving a rally 
there was defending Al-Aqsa and defend Palestine and came over again to this same, uh, the same um, fraternity house. And uh, they were shouting and spitting at people and calling them baby killers, baby killers. Again, another, another blood libel that Jews have been, you know, blamed for forever. I mean, this is not Israelis. This is not going after Israel. This is not volunteering to go fight for the Palestinians. This is attacking Jews in your own campus. Why? M most Jews are not that friendly to Israel. Most Jews are not that pro-Israel. Most Jews are, support a lot of these leftist causes. Doesn't matter. They're Jews. At the University of Santa Cruz, a couple of months ago, where the author, the author's name is, who is the author's name? Dara Horn, where the author was speaking. Multiple university buildings were vandalized with spray paint images of swastikas and nooses. Now, historically, we would have assumed these were some kind of white supremacists, anti-Semitic white supremacists on campus. But that's highly unlikely for two reasons. One, it's Santa Cruz. But second, it's clear that these were students. How do we know that they were students who sprayed these swastikas? And how do we know they were leftist students who sprayed the swastikas? Because the spray cans were actually found in the recycling bins on campus. I, I guess in the, at the university. So, I mean, white, white supremacists don't recycle. I mean, she writes here, which is pretty funny. She says, um, what are your politics? And for many leftists today, or some leftists today at least, it's kill the Jews, save the turtles. As I said, you know, Environmentalism is going to be part of whatever authoritarianism we have in the future. And scarily enough, even in America, anti-Semitism might be part of it as well. A Swarthmore, Swarthmore, another one of these fancy liberal arts schools, they chanted, Swarthmore to Gaza, globalize the Intifada. This is a chant from Swarthmore to Gaza, globalized the intifada they got their rhymes going but do you know what an intifada is do you know what the palestinian intifada looked like in the second palestinian intifada in the early 2000s by the way an intifada was launched after yasser Arafat refused a peace deal offered to him by the americans by bill clinton which basically gave him 97% of everything he wanted. He turned it down and he launched the Second Intifada. The Second Intifada, which, la which lasted years, which basically constituted a 9-11-like mortality rate every few months in Israel as a percentage of the population. It involved suicide bombings, murdering, maiming hundreds of Jews, in restaurants, and Arabs, by the way, and Arabs who got caught up in it, in restaurants, nightclubs, supermarkets, buses, hotels, college campuses, everywhere in Israel. There was no safe place. It was some of the most bloodiest, horrific, most evil periods. Suicide bombers, all supported by Yasser Arafat, all supported by the PLO and by Hamas and by Hezbollah. This is what they want from Swarthmore to Gaza, globalized intifada? Is this what they're looking for, a 9-11-like event every couple of months? Thousands of lives, blood spilled everywhere, civilians? This is... 
what today's universities students want. This is what they crave. We've gone from Woodstock to anti-Semitism pretty quickly here. I guess if you understand Woodstock, then it doesn't shouldn't really surprise you. So this is the left today. Jewish students at university campuses are afraid to identify themselves as Jewish. Ayn Rand once says, she only considers herself Jewish in the face of anti-Semitism. I stand with Ayn Rand on this. I don't think of myself as Jewish, even though I come from Israel and was born Jewish. But in the face of this blatant anti-Semitism, I am Jewish. And in the face of this blatant anti-Semitism, all lovers of liberty should be Jewish. I am Spartacus. We should all stand with these students who are being abused. And we should all stand against this new horrific ideology of hatred, of murder, of bloodshed. Who would have thought that anti-Semitism would be rising in America? Become a real problem in America. It's always been around. I mean, remember Harvard and, and, and a lot of these universities, a lot of the Ivy League universities had, had quotas in terms of how many Jews they would admit. There were many, many uh, clubs that did not admit Jews. There probably still are in some places. Won't, maybe not explicitly, but implicitly. But at this level of anti-Semitism, this level of brutality, this level of verbiage, didn't expect it in America. Didn't expect it from the left. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.